Jason, welcome to the Game Informer Show, sir. <laughs> it's great to be here. Yeah, thanks for joining us, man. It's an exciting time for For Honor. You guys are ramping up to some betas, to the release. People are finally getting to play it. I see commercials on TV where it's like, hey, play for free. It's open beta right now. Go for it. So it's going to be exciting on your end, right? Oh, it's amazing. It's just, it's, it's just, this is what it's all been about, right? Is getting to the point where we can switch on the servers and unleash the hordes, right? So it's, <laughs> uh, it's epic. It's, it's truly epic. And we're, 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 we're playing with, uh, you know, we're making, we're making millions of new friends. It's fantastic. Is that right? Uh, yeah. yeah. So I played uh, a bit of the closed beta and the biggest yeah. takeaway is like, you've made a really interesting, bizarre game. Uh, from what I can tell. So how are you feeling about it at this point? You're basically wrapping things up, right? Well, yeah. So, I mean, for me, of course, my, my part's been, been over for a while, right? Like I, I've been, I've been we're in that closing period, the creative director is the last person they want to hear from, right? They're, they're like, <laughs> yeah. like, we know you have new ideas. That's great and everything. Can you talk about them to someone else? <laughs> um, uh, um, but for me, it's th- this game is, is, uh, has always been sitting inside of me for like 15 years now. This this system that you're talking about, that fighting system, the art of battle fighting system, is it's something that I thought would work, right? And I tried to convince people for 10 years that it would work, and then finally I got this yes and built the team and built the game. And what's incredible about it is that people hit it and you have that experience like, wow, this is new. What is this? But then when within about you know 30 seconds, you know, maybe a couple minutes, people are have forgotten how weird it was and are just beating each other with swords and <laughs> making it work. Right? It's it's fantastic. I, I I love to watch the 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 love of melee combat kind of spread. Um, where does people. that? Where did it come from with you? Because you also worked in Red Steel too. Was that kind of some of the ideas you were experimenting with back then? No, that was this. It started way before then. Okay. Uh, this is this is my topic, man. This is this is the thing. I, I it started with a. I took a course in German longsword. Was what happened. Uh, oh, wow. I did, which is an actual thing. It's uh, Western martial arts. Um, uh, and I was living in San Francisco at the time, and you know, learning these forms. Which, if you've played the Warden you're seeing a lot of those forms. Um, and I thought that I was so impressed by the system, how simple and clear it was. I thought, what would happen if we took these stances and we put them on the right stick? What if you know, we did this? What would happen? And I walking down the, you know, going home, walking home from the dojo, and I'm I'm suddenly pantomiming like, oh, and then it would be this, and then oh, and then we could do, and then it would be the attacks and the ooh, and I got all excited, right? Carrying my wooden sword home, pantomiming like a madman. It was must have been a quite a thing. Um, so then I started pitching to people. I was like, hey, I think that this would, if we did this control layout, if we did this kind of control scheme, that it would f- make you feel the way I feel when I pick up a weapon and I do it for real. Like I go out on the field and, you know, there's this weird tension about you're looking at your enemy and you're observing their defense and trying to guess what they're going to do, but also trying to get your weapon in there, but also preserve your own safety at the same time, that weird mix. That's really what was, was the goal. So I pitched that for like 10 years. And it was no, 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 no. Ten years, man, long time. And then I pitched it at Ubisoft Montreal here, and uh, I got a, I got a no but. <laughs> hey, there we go. That's <laughs> got, good enough, I got man. No but. I have somebody I want you to meet, and I pitched it to the team here, Stefan Cardin and the producers. Uh, it was a producer here, and this team that had worked on Naruto and Prince of Persia and a bunch of combat stuff, and uh, they were like, "Yeah, let's give it a try." That's awesome. And that was. That was five years ago, so now we're uh, we're shipping this monster. Why do you think it's relatively untapped in the game industry? I'm sure like high level fighting games has this to some extent. I, I know a lot of people are comparing this to Bushido Blade, but why is it not? Oh, you're a huge Bushido Blade fan. Well, I have the disc on my mantle at home. No big deal. <laughs> really? Yeah. What a pull! <laughs> But it was, the, 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 that game was the first time I picked up a controller. I, when I tried it, it was the first time that I was like, oh, this is how it feels. This is how it feels. <laughs> you have that terror of their weapon and this, like, you're going to f*** it up. And I would always miss, like, uh, oh, no. Right? Like, <laughs> that was, Bushido Blade was, oh, dear God. Yeah. <laughs> like, right? Like, that was that was the experience. Um, but it felt, it had true emotions of combat. And, but then we went a different direction, right? We went, we went away from that with game design. We went, we went to a, to the, to where fighting games have gone. And yeah, I, I, I'm delighted to be coming back to the kind of the, what I think of as the emotional center of fighting, which is the observing your opponent's stance and this queer, you know, this, this um, simple, uh, you know, being in control of your own uh, defense system. And right. Just right. Just a little more deliberate, a little more intimate. It is bizarre. But simple. Yeah. Simple enough that it activates your lizard brain, right? Simple, simple enough that you're not thinking about the combos. You're like, he's gonna hit me in the thing, right? Like, <laughs> like it's really, it's 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 visceral. It's in your body when you learn it. It's quick now when you learn it, right? I think you, I love to see people like, ah, 
right? Like it's, that's the goal. So do you consider it a simple game? I've heard a lot of people with the beta be like, I don't really understand some of the game modes going on in here. Even if you understand like the basics and you can handle a 1v1 or a 2v2, uh, yeah. Do you still argue that it is a simple game to grasp? Um, I think it's a simple game to learn. Um, okay. It is a it is it is absolutely a difficult game to master, but that's what we want, right? We want a game that has a, it has rules that are that are and systems that are deep enough that there's that there's kind of an endless opportunity for mastery, but that you can get into it, like you say, like you can get in and you can start being effective and getting into that fantasy almost immediately, right? That was that was the that was the goal. That's what that's what that's what we love with with video games. I I wanted to make this game for you know anyone with a sword fighting fantasy like that you know if you if you've ever opened that the the you know the 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 catalog and browse through you know you're 14 and you get that catalog in the mail that has all the weapons the medieval weapons in it and you're like I want that one right that's me right like I like <laughs> making games for that you know um uh, for anyone who was into that right who was just who ever thought I might be a warrior right um and that meant making it as accessible as as simple as we could make it right yeah um, for sure so it's it's a hell of a shot to have this idea for so long, finally get the green light within Ubisoft Montreal. Like, let's ramp up AAA. Let's give it its all. What is that process like? Like, what opened that door a crack finally along the way? Um, you know, I've had some time to reflect on it. Um, I think for I think I got better at pitching. Honestly, um, one uh, I think I, I think I kind of sucked at it in the beginning. I was like, you know, I have this interesting mechanical idea, right? And by the end, when I finally pitched, it was to Yanis uh, um, Malat, who's the he's a managing director here, the general manager at Ubisoft Montreal, he was like, he's, you know, we're at, he took me to lunch. He says, uh, what, would, what do you really want to do, Jason? Like, you know, just, you know, anything. What do you want to do? I'm like, what do I want to do? I'm all pissed. I'll tell you what I want to do. You grab the like, knife off the table. Yeah, like, because you know, I'm was it 10 years of saying no, right? 10, 10 years of people saying no. I'm like, I, I said, I told him, I'll tell you what I want to do. And you're going to tell me no. Because we don't make games like this. But what I want to do is I want to change the way that we think about fighting. And I want to I want to put the emotions of the battlefield onto the controller and really just like, you know, get, create that 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 martial warrior experience. But for everybody, that's what I want to do. I'd imagine it must be tough, too, because there's so much IP at Ubisoft. It seems like an idea where it's like, you know, maybe down the road with Assassin's Creed, we could rework the combat system to incorporate some of those ideas, Jason. Right. When you, when you approach it rationally, that was the, I think that was the difference is that when you approach it rationally like that, when you're like, well, this is interesting as a concept, right? Then it's the, that then then you kind of get stuck over there. But I, what I think what stuck, what I think the reason that it, the, 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 the pitch kind of took was that I wasn't approaching it from that standpoint anymore. I was I was like, yeah, yeah, technical, schmechnical. What I want to do is I want to put a freaking sword in your hand, you know, and, you know, give you that that weird sense that mix of like adrenaline and danger and terror and bravery that that real combat gives you this feeling of like i need to pay complete attention that's locked in on my enemy and what they're doing but i also need to not forget that they have friends because you know they can right like like that and that weird feeling of like okay we're gonna fight and only one of us is gonna walk away from this it, you know, it's it, and then that happens again and again and again. It that those emotions are so intense, but they're so human. We've been yeah. doing that to each other longer than we've had language. You know, like it's a very, very old experience. This one, right, that we sort of brought to life, and yet there wasn't a video game that felt that way. I didn't think. I, I, I've not. I don't know of another video game that captures that that sort of battlefield. Um, you know, sort of elite warrior fantasy in the way that for honor does yeah uh, i'm really proud of that yeah for sure so such a solid core idea was there ever any discussion of making it like a, a you know grow home scale project or why <laughs> keep packing more and more on top of it because it seems like it could just be like a cool little duel right um yeah i guess so we have the duel in there right like you know <laughs> um but I, actually when we started the game when we started from the very beginning, uh, we, I mean, we, we had, we had some initial prototypes or we had like 400 prototypes. We made a bunch of prototypes. Um, we had some that were initially that were just doing the duels so we were working out the combat, but as soon as we could, we were like four V four, let's get on the battlefield. Let's do multiple things because it, it, it was clear to us that, that the, that the magic of this combat happens when you're, when you're dealing with the unpredictable nature of a battle, Right. Where it's not a it's not a tournament with people applauding. Right. It's it's this is a field where 
everyone's kind of committed and this really this matters to somebody, you know, like it's, it's important in some way. And, and that, that the complexity and the interest that comes from having people who you're fighting with and alongside and against, right. Was always kind of core to the experience. I don't know. We, we started small, like we started with a small team of, uh, you know, like 20 people and kind of grew, slowly, grew, slowly grew over time. But like a lot of projects at Ubisoft, it, 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 it grew as it, as it sort of proved itself, right? As it, as it, 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 we would pass through these gates and, and people would go, they would get excited about it because we would do these tournaments and, and try out the game. Even when it was just stick figures, people got really excited about it. Um, and so I think that's, you know, why did it get bigger and stuff is because we could, right? We, yeah. it's like, we, we kept saying, yeah, let's go, let's do it. Like, let's, you know, we, we, as a team, we kept saying, let's, yes, there's more we could do here. Um, it's amazing that we made it, you know, that we made it this far. Is it tough to keep, like core concept as like your guiding star along the way do you worry about things getting watered down do you have to have like a sticky note on your monitor being like hey don't ever deviate from this core concept as we put more and more systems in this thing yeah well that's my job is yeah that, that's, my job. that's my job so <laughs> is if we if we deviate from the core concept then i've failed basically that's the that's the that's the concept and we do do that like i had for me the 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 core like i have at the very big sort of the core of this game i have this belief um I, I believe that very deeply that combat is an art form, um, an, like capital A art form. Uh, and I discovered that I'm not alone in that belief. And I and I I think I I think also that like warriors are artists who sometimes give their life in the defense of what they believe in, right? Um, which is intense, but that's yeah. how I that's I believe that, right? I think that that's really true. Um, and I just happen to believe that combat with weapons. Um, this martial style of combat is the most beautiful sort of you know compelling dangerous tense it's the one that i like the most it's my favorite version of that even though that concept applies to all kinds of combat right um even if it's just social sparring or whatever right um um but that i and so what i wanted to do is i wanted to create a game that that captured that love of the art uh of combat um and and not necessarily as a specific like this person or this specific faction but as the, the whole thing like give you a give you enough of a selection of types of warriors and types of fighting that you could find your warrior your sort of inner <laughs> inner inner you know uh, fight artist right um, battle artist um, uh, and you can get out on that field and 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 let them let them let your inner warrior play right that was yeah that was always the goal so we, we have those things I mean I had a bunch of other ones like it's you have those you know you, you make those sticky notes and you share them with the team that's how you keep people on track yeah it, so when this game was announced you're out at e3 i think it was the announcement and you really gave it your all on that stage it could not have shown more enthusiasm unless you're like bleeding from the eyes i don't know what else you do how important is it for the team just to have that huge enthusiasm and that huge rallying moment like that well it was i mean that moment was incredible for us but it's funny because people people always are like oh man you were so amped up there i'm like it's just how i am I'm, I'm not just like, I only have one speed. Like that's the, it just works really well in that moment. Right. Like, but it, it, cause I'm always like, that's, that's how I feel about this topic. Right. It's just, it, it was amazing. Um, we had, it was an amazing moment. Cause first we were, we made it all the way to that moment when, when, when the trailer started and nobody knew, yeah. right. <laughs> it was like, it was a total surprise. Right. Um, that's hard to do. That was, it wasn't even trick. in Watch Dogs one, which is a miracle for you guys. I don't know how you pulled that <laughs> exactly, off. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that was, it was, and it was a huge moment for us because we also, we knew with this game, with this concept, it was, it was, it's so new as a way to play. It's so, it's such a, it's, such, it's a reinterpretation, a whole new way to do something that people already know how to do which it's is fight right? primal but, but it, new yeah it's a weird mix yeah exactly so it's this weird moment right we knew that we were going to have to go out live and we were going to have to say not just say oh yeah it's going to make you feel this way but go like this like and here's how right yeah um and so we did it we got you know the, we had the team and those those eight dev team members who got up there and they just played the game played the game live on stage and it all worked it was amazing it was a it was an unbelievable moment yeah so with what I'd imagine is, as you mentioned, a growing ballooning team and it's gigantic now, what have you learned about being a team leader from this experience? Because you've led projects <laughs> before, right? But this must be night and day. Yeah. Oh, this is totally different. I'm, 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 I, I have, compl I've, I've, I've gone through like three complete new theories of leadership. In oh, this, please in this, walk through all of them. I would love it. 
<laughs> um, uh, well, I mean, you know, when I started when I started here, I had this I had these core concepts about this is the kind of game I wanted to make, but I was really focused on on design, right? I was really focused on like it would be here's how it would work, right? Um, that was really how I started, and, I, my, and a lot of my early pitches and my early conversations were like, I think the mechanics would be like this, and it turns out that that's well, that's interesting. Um, it's okay. It doesn't. The problem with that approach is that if you're not in the room, then the team is like, well, where's the guy to to tell us how it's going to work, right? Um, and so what I learned was that. I learned to communicate in terms of the principles that the, like the target, like what are we shooting for? How do we want this mechanic to feel? What's the player's goal here? How do we want the player to experience this mechanic, this moment? What are we going for in terms of the goal to kind of hand it, hand it off? Cause you, you, we hire these incredibly talented people, right? These amazing, experienced, passionate game developers, right? Um, what they want is they want a problem to solve, not a solution to execute. Right. Like it's, Interesting. Right? Okay. Yeah. You know. And so I, I've learned. I learned that that the the best way to hand off a problem to solve is say, let's take this this mechanic and make the player feel like this with it. Right. We're gonna take this combat moment, right? And we're going to make them feel this sense of tension and I can really see what the other enemy is doing and give let them read the opponent. That's really the goal. Okay. Well, then that tells you a bunch of stuff about, you know, how, how fast the combat's going to be and kind of what the motions are going to be. And it gives developers a target to go for. Yeah. So I've been, I, so I've been through all that. And then of course it, it like it, it levels up when the team gets bigger, you have to, you have to, um, you have to produce these big sort of guiding pillars about, about what each of the factions are. You know, we have these nice, these Vikings, these samurai, but yeah. that's not really what they were, what they are. They're not just skins, right? They're like belief systems. These, these, these three factions, right? They're like, I, I, I discovered this, People, I would give the test. I would say, you know, ask people, "Night like Viking Samurai," right? Uh, and everyone always knows. Right? That's yeah. the amazing thing about that question: is you know, right? You know, of course, right? Viking. Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. So there you go. Um, <laughs> and the, you've known that since you were eight, right? That's right. Like yeah. it's, you know, we all do that. Um, well, why? Because those are values. And if I would say, if if I was to lead the team and say and say, well, you know, be, we're doing Vikings because they're cool. Well, all right. But instead, I say we're doing Vikings because Vikings are about the belief that that life is meant to be lived to the fullest, and it's about freedom and expression and passion and really, you know, an enthusiasm for what you're doing and fearlessness, right? Like you're, you're, the moment of your death has been foretold, so fearlessness, right? Just go for it all the way, like living that way. People who choose Vikings, they they believe in that, right? <laughs> That's they tend to anyway, right? They tend to have those kinds of beliefs. For people who choose knights, they believe in protecting the weak, right? Like stepping in front, like I am the law, the shield that defends the right. They say this sort of this the concept of nobility. Um, and the people who choose samurai, they choose they they tend to believe in mastery, right? They choose in like like you know, the study studying something, reaching for perfection, knowing that you'll never get there, right? So the 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 trick what I've learned over the over the years on this project is is instead of telling people what I want, I tell them why I want it. It's interesting. Like I remember hearing an interview with Brad Bird, the film director one time where he said that directing is just a series of responding to yes or no questions. And just yeah. anything you can do to like alleviate from that bottleneck is key. So that seems like a good way to go, right? That's the key. If you can, if you can give them a lens, you say you, you can do that. You can do a yes or no, yes or no, yeah, yeah, this, 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 this. And you, you have to do that, right? So what is the final phase of creative directing that you learned on this project then? Uh, being done and kicking back and playing the game while, <laughs> you know, <laughs> all, the, all the, the builds finalized. What's weird about being a creative director, and it, it's not obvious to people that, that it would be this way, but it's, it's, uh, is that um, I'm the first one who's done. Right. I'm, I'm the, I'm the first one out the door. And so like, it's, it's, it, 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 it is a, it's a weird experience. Right. But, but normally if I'm doing my job right, I shouldn't be involved in the finaling process very much. Right. We should just be fixing bugs and stabilizing and the game design team is making their balance changes and, you know, we're, we're fixing the game, but everything should be in place. Right. Um, so I've actually been, you know, just relaxing thinking about the future and you know just like chilling for a while it's so gotta be it's nice, nice. Does, it's weird it's not comfortable i'm not okay with it does chilling involve just sitting back and getting a lot of feedback from the beta watching twitch streams <laughs> all that type of thing i have i have been involved in a couple of twitch streams yeah ah, i have okay. been, uh, been digging in there having you know playing the game with people having a great time it's uh, it's been amazing the response has been it's overwhelming honestly i love how much the <laughs> 
the 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 fans are really embraced feels like they really embrace the system and i my favorite moments are always when i i, I catch people i see people online they're talking to each other or even sometimes live and they and they're explaining the game to each other right but they're they explain it in terms they in, in terms of like real combat right they're like uh, you know no no you need to do this thing and you step back and use the thing they're not talking about it mechanically right they they discuss it in terms of like you know the real space as though it was a real fight and i i i just love that 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 was always our goal was for you to believe in it as a fight, as a real fight, right? Um, without burdening you with all that simulation crap, right? I think um, that's the way. I think that's the way Conan O'Brien explained it to Tom Brady recently. Yeah, I think, I think, that's, yeah, what I think there. that's about right. Did you watch that video yet? Have you seen <laughs> I that? I did. It was amazing. It was so good. I mean, I don't know what Conan was thinking. He was going to get from Tom. I, I, <laughs> you know, I, it's a real chuckle fest. That guy. By the result at the end, I. I don't know that I would be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so with uh, monitoring the beta and everything, is there a world where you can see the stats? Do people in Asia tend to go for the samurai? Do uh, Scandinavians <laughs> tend to go for the Vikings? Is there any differentiation there that you can reveal? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a little bit of a drift in that way. Uh, we see it. We see a kind of a. Um... Uh, generally a nice even split sort of across the population. Samurai Samurai as a whole has a slight bump in popularity. There's like a 30-30-40 split that you see oh, often in the polls. It's okay. a, they, have, they, have, they have good press, right? Samurai have good PR, right? They've had a good, you know... They're, For they're, thousands they're, of years, yeah. Thousands of years of good PR is paying off right now, right, mm-hmm. for the Samurai. Um... Uh, um, and you do see, you do see, you do see a little bit more of a leaning towards the, towards the sort of the, the, the home team gets extra love, right? Uh, you know, like the further, the further north you get, the more Vikings <laughs> you see, and you know, um, but it's not, you know, it's not huge. It's, yeah. uh, it's, uh, we just, we just see, we see shifts in the population. Based. So you love hearing, uh, people describe the game as actual combat, but is there anything you're looking for in the beta? Any feedback that you're really hungry for? What are you, what are you most jonesing for there? Well, we're, you know, this beta, when we're getting at this point in the game, right, we're, of course, we're always looking for balance issues and, and, you know, we're getting a lot of feedback on, on, you know, what people are perceiving. And there's always this weird disconnect between what people, you know, the way that they feel about the balance and what the numbers actually tell us. Yeah, right? for so sure. we have to always have to balance that out, but we're still looking at that. But it, with these, with this, with the closed beta, of course, really what we're trying to accomplish is we're, we're in, we're moving into the phase where we're just testing our infrastructure, right? Like just, can we hold up this many people, right? Can we, can we keep this damn thing running? And working on matchmaking and and you know just the the getting to the, the to scale uh, the game, um, it's also uh, you know the first time we have nine heroes available right where which is you know just three shy of our of our full set of 12 right um, so seeing people you know sort of we've sort of been gradually expanding that as we go so seeing people you know seeing the way that players choose their team layouts and what what characters they choose when the when the when the field of selection is a lot wider right, right? um is super interesting right How super did, interesting. i mean it, it certainly looks like you guys were greatly inspired by rainbow six siege uh and having the operators there was that a direct uh comparison or is that just a coincidence um i would say it would be i say i think it's two teams working in the same you know same building who yeah. came to the same good conclusion separately is kind of the way that it works we talk to each other um and of course rainbow we, we what's what's cool about you working at ubisoft one of the things that's cool about you ubisoft is that you get those best practices right um but i mean we've been we've been um it's been a long project right and and our problem is very very different than than um siege's problem right we're third person right we're we're and we have this, this sort of the dominion mode right we're really built up by these big battlefields and they're really about their asymmetric thing and right it's a it's a rainbow is a totally different experience but it also what what was cool about rainbow was that it really proved that that our that this approach of like we're going to give away you know the maps are going to be free right we're going to give you free content moving on afterward we're going to you know let you you know sort of customize your own guy and really putting a lot of emphasis on on the post launch um, content and being sure that that play that we're doing that in a way that's that feels fair and and equal to the to the players now that really works when the game is good right like it, that's the right way to go. Um, and so it was great to see that we were, that was our plan all along. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it wasn't like, Oh, we should do that too. It was like, um, no, that we, we thought it was a good idea and look, it was a good idea. Right. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's been nice, but it's, you know, uh, it's a very different team, very different, um, uh, process. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's, uh, anyway, no, no, you got it. So, so sometimes good, like, like 
you want to make good design decisions, and sometimes a good design decision is just good, even if the last team out the door did the same thing, right? And so it's it's hard to to evaluate, you know. Having towers that you climb up to reveal the map, that's just good. <laughs> Ubisoft can't get away from it. It's just golden. It's perfect. Wow, we should add those. We should add those to the <laughs> So now that the game's so close to release, are there any big misconceptions out there you want to clear up? Are people do you hear people saying something about the game a lot that isn't true that you want to embrace, like have them bracing for more of the game to have an impact in this way? Um, what I would say is that um, the the biggest thing that I see people saying um, that it, it's not necessarily a bad thing um, is that they're really surprised that this is the game, right? Huh. They, they they there's a lot of people who watch the game like they've seen videos of the game and they're like oh it's a," uh, and they fill in the blank on what they think the game is and go i know what that feels like dinosaur warriors got is. it yeah yeah i know what that is that's yeah. dinosaur warriors or whatever that is right um and then they pick up the controller and then like five minutes later they're back on reddit going dude it was not that it's not that at all right like it's right it's it, it's it's so i think i think the 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 misconception it the, the one that is, it's always been tricky for us, which is, which is, it really is new. Like, new in a way, like, you haven't played a game that feels like this, and you may or may not like it, right? <laughs> like, I'm not saying that guarantees you're going to like it, but what I'm saying is, if, you, if, you, if you've seen the game, or you're hearing about it, and you think you know what it's like, you probably don't, right? So, give it a shot. Right, yeah. like we've got, you know, open beta coming. Right, like <laughs> right you know, just like, play it. Yeah, just play it. Just it's... download it, play it, and it. And that's the. I think that's the biggest one that we uh, we try to cross with people is it's not what you think it is. Yeah, it's exciting to have a new IP in the industry. Especially exciting to have one that yeah feels feels new coming from a studio as talented as USF Montreal. So it's a, it's a fun time for the industry. So, Hey, thanks for the hard work, man. We appreciate it. <laughs> well, it is what we're here to do. So I'm glad that it's worked out. Thank you so much for watching this excerpt from the game former show podcast. You can click right here. If you want to subscribe and listen to the audio version of the full show, full episodes air every Thursday and they feature game former editors sitting around talking about the biggest reviews previews. We talk about exclusive impressions of game informers cover stories. We have long form developer interviews everything that's great in gaming. So every Thursday, be sure to check it out.